I don't care who you are. At some point, you're going to be down. The question is, do you stay down or do you come back? The greatest opportunity you'll ever have is when you're nearly beaten. All right, you've heard these guys' stories of making a comeback. Now it's your turn. If you've ever been down, or sooner or later you're going to be down, we're going to show you exactly what you can do to make your brilliant comeback. Olympian Dan O'Brien was the face of Reebok in 1992 when he was featured in the famous Dan and Dave ad campaign, only to face national embarrassment when he failed to make the U.S. team. But Dan stayed focused on his dream and four years later won gold in the 96 Olympics. Barry Moltz helps businesses come back from failure and is the author of Bounce. All right, Barry, start with you. First thing for somebody to do when they're down? I think first thing you have to do is you got to grieve. I think you got to have a pity party. I think you got to cheer the darkness. Well, give me an example. Okay, let's say what in, in, in the case of Don here, he's blown up. He was supposed to what? Celebrate and say, I screwed up. Look how great I am. I think you got to feel sorry for yourself. Something bad really happened to you, Don. And I think you got to say, God, something really bad. Do it for 24 hours. Then I think you got to bounce. You got to let go and you got to move on and take an action like Don did to get to another success. So first wallow a little bit. Allow yourself I that pity. Good Don, thing. good advice? Yeah, and I think you keep your eyes open while you're wallowing. You say, what can I learn from here? What's one thing I can take away from this experience that I can bring with me moving forward? Okay, Barry, you say there were four things to do after that. And the first one is just let go of the failure. I think you got to let go. Sometimes we spend far too much time looking to see what there is to learn. Sometimes failure just stinks and there's nothing to learn right at this moment. I think you then have to let go. You got to give up the shame. You got to face your fear. And then you have to take some small action like Don did here so you can get the confidence back to get to another success. Okay, Dan. Barry, but you act, you believe in something a little different, not in this learn from the failure. You, you're not a believer in that. I think that there always isn't something to learn from failure. Sometimes it just stinks, or maybe we just can't learn from failure right now. I think we have to understand that failure is just part of a business life cycle. There's success, there's failure, okay. and to have resiliency to develop true business confidence, we need to thrive through the series of ups and downs, okay. which is the life cycle. Dan, around you, because you're going to always amplify whatever the misery is, and if you take it outside, it, it's maybe not going to seem as I it think it's good to have someone outside to tell you, guess what? You've been good before, you can be good again. That's why I think that trophies, certificates, all those things in your office and your desk are great reminders. The, the bad times, they don't last forever. You were up before, guess what? You're down now, but you're up again. I always say, it's not whatever you're living right now, it's not forever. It's going to right. Here the playbook plays, you got to take a break. Allow yourself to feel bad for a while. Wallow in it, man. Grief is good. Of course, you can't get back up without feeling bad first. Know exactly what you're trying to accomplish when you're ready to let go of that grief. Sometimes learn from a failure. I say always learn from a failure. Learn from it, then write it off. Think like a boxer. When folks think you're down and out, they'll leave you an opening for that counter punch. Well, that idea is straight ahead. Barry, is part of the in a situation like this where you have to make the right turn, is it almost completely Risky to be risk averse because you almost have nothing to lose and, and risk you got to embrace it at that point. You know, failure, Donnie, really does give us choices. When we're failed, when we're down, we're out, we have no place to go what, except up. So now's the time to take action, take another risk because you got nothing to lose. Well, I want to talk about fear and anxiety. Barry, is it fair to say then if we're going to be as successful as we can be, all of us have to almost have that failure, have that, you know, we have to come back, otherwise we'll never know how great we can be. We have to realize that failure is just a part of life, just like success is. It really is a cycle. And it's okay to be afraid. We're afraid of so many things. I'm afraid to fly, but now I fly 100 times a year. How do I overcome it? I put a set of tunes on my iPod. It's called Turbulence Tune. Whenever that airplane starts shaking, I put in the Turbulence Tunes, and I get through it. you got to face your fear. I love it. All right, Cynthia, once again, congratulations, man. We need more Cynthia's in the world, more now more than ever. Okay, here are the playbook plays at the heart of every comeback. Doing the right thing. Have the courage to make the right ethical decision. I always say the good guys win. Manage your darkest fear by doing something about it. Take some kind of action. Taking risks is a habit you can teach yourself by saying, what is one risk I can actually take on today? And also do best worst case scenario. It's neither one. It'll give you the courage to keep going. More big ideas straight ahead. And how can they teach you a new trick in the art of a comeback? You have to ask yourself, what got me here? You know, how did I get to this place? How can a plane that crashed 500 times be the master blueprint for innovation and the art of the comeback? Find out in our exclusive web extra at bigidea.cnbc.com. All right, Scott, people pay you hundreds of thousands of dollars for your advice on bringing brands back. 
What can I learn at home if I'm somebody who right now my brand is broken, either I lost my job, my business is failing, my house is getting for it, whatever it is, that you teach the Volvos of the world when they get into troubles with the attorney generals because they were doing false advertising years ago, or Britney Spears whose brand is blowing up. What can I learn from that? I think in both cases you have to ask yourself, what got me here? You know, how did I get to this place? And and big companies will spend a lot of money on research to get to that, but I think the individual can reach out to their friends, to some family, people they trust, open up, and, and frankly, look themselves in the mirror and say, what's going on? How did I get to this place? Barry, is that a useful exercise? I think it really is. I think you've got to go out there, and I think that you have to really make it happen. You've got to say, why did it happen to me? Why am I here? But then you've got to move on. I think people spend far too much time being down. As Karen was saying before, sometimes some people say, hey, it wasn't my fault. Other people say, God, I'm so self-absorbed in it. You've got to get through it. I always say, Donnie, the worst they can do is eat you, and that's illegal. And you know something? You always get another chance the next day. Scott, yeah. give me some more of those. Yeah, Parker from Illinois. Yeah, I tried so many different ways of marketing to my consumer, and nothing seemed to work. I feel like I keep hitting setback after setback. I'm ready for my comeback. What should I do? Try to take a small action where you think you can get an easy success. If you can get an easy success, that will breed more success and more confidence. Okay, one small action. Okay, John from Houston on the phone. I have a health insurance company. Our sales team's frustrated because they have not closed as many deals as they would like. Uh, what are some things we can do to really motivate and excite our team so they can overcome these setbacks? Hey, Grant, you're a guy in the locker room. It's all about motivation. How does he bring this into the business world? Wow. Well, I think to be success, you got to have, as we all have said earlier, the right attitude. And I think attitude is a choice. So I think you can choose to try to have the right attitude by motivating, get everybody feeling the same way, getting their spirits up. And I think then they can probably get the right results. What, Don, what's the key to motivation for you, when, especially when somebody, when, the, when it's not going well? How do you stay motivated? Inspiration, the, the, the visualizing success, visualizing being successful and the outcome of what success brings to you. I think reward is very important. We learned that from an early age. Give some type of reward. Um, and so for motivating my sales team, I give everybody ownership in the development projects that they work on. So ownership motivates. Find out what they want, give it to them. Gary from New Jersey. My huge setback right now is I cannot find a distributor. I'm thinking about going ahead with production anyway, but I'm financing this through my home equity line of credit. I'm afraid this will put me back even further and put my family at risk. Should I go for it anyway? Barry, this is a guy who's embracing risk in a tough situation. You're, you're nodding your head now, though. No, I think you have to find a distributor. You know, just because you build it doesn't mean people will come. you got to find someone that's going to sell your product before you make the product. So I would wait until you can get out in the market. Nathan from D.C. I have this huge setback. I put my, all my money, all my time and effort into this idea. I know it works, but I have no money left. I need help. I have no idea what to do. Don, I mean, guys put it all on black. What does he do? You got to go. There's always going to be money for a good deal. You just got to keep looking for that money. Find people. Go to your friends. Go to business associates. Go to people and tell them about your idea. Promote your idea. Call the Washington Post or the Uptown Citizen in Washington, D.C. Tell them about your idea. Get that idea out there. You, find, you got a good idea, a good product, you'll find somebody who will buy it or will put money into it. So from California. I had this amazing company that I poured my heart and soul and every resource I have into it. And we have been unable to secure the financing to move to the next level. And this is the biggest setback I've experienced so far. And we're looking at this point at closing up shop. Is this something I can come back from? Barry. The question is, can you scale it back? Can you morph it into something else? There's many ideas or many businesses start over here and become something else. Is there a kernel of your company that you can make get small and then move it forward? Okay, final playbook is that. Barry, playbook. Set patient interim goals. Small successes are going to give you the renewed confidence in order to meet your large visions. Cynthia. Yeah, use it as an opportunity to step back and reevaluate your life and don't be afraid to break out. Go in a different direction, take a risk, and don't let your fears hold you back. Grant, final playbook on coming back. Yeah, no matter what, you have to believe. You have to believe in yourself. You have to believe that you're capable, that even though you've had this setback, you still can be successful and you still can overcome. My final play, the word snapshot. No matter how bad it is, it's only a snapshot in time. There's always tomorrow. We'll see you next time.